everyone, this is Margaret Manning with 60 and Me. This is the place where women over 60 come to be inspired. And our makeup and beauty expert, Arian Poole, is with us today. She's a great friend of 60 and Me, and we've got some questions from the community for Arian. How are you doing, Arian? I am doing really great and ready and raring to go. <laughs> it is so good to have you here because um, this time, you know, we've done lots of videos with you. We have a, a, a product uh, a videos as well, and um, uh, uh, beauty videos. And we have asked the community of women. We have about 100,000 in our community now. Wow. And, yeah, and we ask them, what questions do you have for Arian? And they love you. So they just laid it out there, all the stuff that's on their minds. Well, I love answering, so I'm ready. So all right. fire away. <laughs> okay, so we have one here that I'm. people are, it's, it's not a taboo subject. It's one that people sometimes don't want to talk about. Yeah. And that is facial hair. They pop up in the strangest places, like overnight. <laughs> exactly what you said, overnight. You look at yourself in the mirror, you put your creams on at night, you go to bed thinking, oh, you know, lovely. You wake up the next morning, you look in the mirror, and where did that one that suddenly, it was not there, and it's suddenly this long. <laughs> it's a mystery. It's one of the it's, mysteries of the universe. It, it really is. I think we should do a time lapse on our faces and just see how it kind of springs uh, out at us. But laughing aside, what do we it do? is quite disconcerting. I have facial hair as well. I've got a few that grow here along my chin. I've got quite a few that grow along here, which yes. I really, you know, I'm keeping an eye on. And uh, then I get a few that sort of grow around this area, like by my oh. ears and things. Really annoying. <laughs> so, and, so what do we do about it? I mean, I actually get them the side of my my, and yeah. I probably and I hope I'm doing the right thing. But you're going to tell us what is oh, the oh, right thing. I to get do? them here too, yeah. And you can feel them. You go. Oh. <laughs> I know. <laughs> anyway, all right. There's there's a few things. Can I say the nose first? Yes, please. Okay. Let's start Don't there. shave. Okay? okay. I have had quite a few clients that I'm doing their makeup and I touch here and I suddenly feel like stubble and they have shaved that area, probably out of frustration. So I can really sympathize with that. You get so fed up and you think, oh, yeah. enough. I and I, did I, it. I, did you, it. I beg you not to yeah. do that because once you get down that road, it's a slippery road. You have to keep on doing it and it grows back in stubble like a man's beard. So you really, really don't want to do that. Now, um, normally I would say, to, I mean, I'm a huge fan of threading for the eyebrows, but I yeah. spoke to one client when we were talking about this conversation exactly, mm -hmm. funnily enough, and she said, oh, I tried threading on my face, but it made the hairs grow back thicker and more. Now, that could have been just her experience or that could have been a generalized experience. I don't know, but I'm just sharing that with the community just in case it's mm -hmm. happened to you. You're not the odd one out if it has happened. Um, uh, and Arian, it's just for interrupting you, but could you just explain for those who don't know what threading is, what threading it is? Threading is an Indian technique from India, and they kind of hold like cotton thread in their teeth and they go like this. And I don't they pull, know how they pull out the hair with the, thread. Out with the thread. Um, I've never had it done. I don't have that many hairs on my brows to do, to do it. And I've always been really vigilant with my brows anyway, but I've recommended lots of people having it done because the ones that I've seen who've had the brows done look amazing. Yes. Whenever I'm doing someone's makeup and I see perfect brows, I said, do you get it thread? And they go, yes. And I know it, yeah. I know it for a fact. So it's a good thing. Okay. Um, but like I said, I don't know what the situation is when it's around the face, the, the face area rather than the brows. Okay. Now, what I do is I use tweezers. I use a good pair of tweezers. Um, these are my Ariane Pool ones, but Tweezer Man ones are brilliant because they are yeah. super efficient and super great. And then there's a lady here in the UK called Siobhan, and she does some really great tweezers as well. So, okay. you know, look tweezers. for one, you need to have a good pair of tweezers, not, and you have to make sure that they come together. So if I do that, this has to come together. If there's gaps. Is it pointed? Is it a pointy one or is it flat? A slanted one. Oh, it's slanted. Okay. Some okay. people like pointy. Some people like slanted. I prefer slanted right. because of the angles that I go in yes, on okay. like that. So fine. But it's completely personal choice. The other thing I would suggest is a super, super good mirror. I have a love-hate relationship with this mirror. <laughs> I have one too. This is also a tweezer man mirror. I think it's magnification times 20 or 15 or something like that. Mm -hmm. It's huge. It's a scary mirror. What is great, it's got these little suction cups. Yes, I have one too on my window. <laughs> there you go. On your window, you look yeah. at it, you go, oh my gosh. And you could be there for like 15 minutes getting rid of all the stuff that you need to get rid of. But at least you can see it because, you know, looking in a normal mirror, you just don't notice them. And how I notice the ones on my chin, I'm sitting in the car in traffic and I go, 
<laughs> and you're trying to pull it out with your fingers. What does it work? No. You can't get a grip with your fingers. Anyway, so the right. other thing, if it's really an issue, laser treatment is really, really good. Women I know that have had it have actually sworn by it. So if it's something that is in your budget and you really want to have it done, right. then go for that as well. Okay. But, yeah, you know, there are there are options out there. What about the creams? I'm uh, the only reason I'm not a huge fan of the creams. Uh, waxing is good, but the f- cream sometimes, yeah. if you're if you have sensitivity, it can cause a flare up. Now, I did a, an event in a waxing studio. Um, how weird is that? Uh, it's called Wax in the City. It's uh, here in the UK, <laughs> but apparently it's all over Europe yeah. as well. And these women came out with these. They're 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 this bit here their upper lips waxed and they were c- complaining because it looked like a bright red so do you know what works really good to hide that redness no what i was going to ask you about that the concealer palette aha uh-huh. oh yeah your concealer palette is awesome I, I put it on one of the ladies and she went oh my gosh yes she ran around the salon go, look at look at look at look at you can't this, see why am i looking there's nothing you haven't anything done go, <laughs> i have i had this wax it was bright red ariane got rid of the red so if you're going to do the waxing and you have to go somewhere or go to work or right whatever, away, yeah, or go so, any any go out the door anywhere, <laughs> anywhere in public, even if, if it's on the you know getting home, um, the concealer palette works really really well to neutralize. It's non uh, pore clogging, so it will not clog the pores. It works really well just yeah. to neutralize. So waxing is a really other good option as well. That's a really great suggestion. I'm glad that you mentioned that because I have always been nervous about putting makeup on my lip after I've had it waxed because I thought that I would get, um, it would flare up with acne. It would, you know, that it would get into my pores. But and that's, so, yeah. Yeah, but that's great to know that. I mean, of course, the concealer palette isn't going to clog your pores, so it's perfect. No, and it was only because she sat in my chair and she wanted me to do her eyes. And I'm looking at her eyes thinking, yeah. I can't do that with this bright red, what looks like a, like a red <laughs> stripe. I said, it's going to distract. So I said, let me just do this. And she went, oh, no. And she, I did it. And she went, okay, that is, yeah. That's and she cool. was actually more happy with the fact that I hid the red than I did amazing eyes on her, but she was really chuffed with the, the, the red being gone. That so, is very you know, cool. It's good. Okay, yeah. so we know what not to do. We know what yeah. to do. And if you want to um, take a look at Arian's website, it's arianpool.com. That's P-O-O-L-E.com. And you've got some the concealer palette, of course, and all kinds of other wonderful products. And um, I think this has been helpful. I hope that this has helped you if you're watching and concerned about facial hair. And if you do have any questions for Arian, just leave them in the section below the article and Arian checks in now and again and I can answer as well and uh, make sure we get all your questions answered. Thanks, Arian. Really Thank appreciate you. your advice on this one.